Good morning, everyone. Just gonna make sure the video is set up properly. <clears throat> yeah, I guess that's good. At least you can see the screen. So, just wanna go over what we've done so far and how it's leading us into our present topic of covalent or molecular bonding. Can't emphasize enough how important it is that you guys know your periodic table and how to use it. That's something you can always be reviewing. And then from that point, we did our Bohr Rutherford diagrams just before March break. Super important that you understand the structure of the atoms and how we can then take that into a Lewis dot diagram to help us do our, our bonding. And then last lesson online, we talked about ionic bonding. So maybe just a quick review on ionic bonding before we get into our new topic of covalent or molecular bonding. So when we talked about ionic bonding, that was always based on our knowledge that any time two atoms combined and one was a metal and one was a non-metal, that it had to be an ionic bond. And our best example for that was salt or NaCl. And the first step was to draw the dot diagrams for both molecules and then see if, or sorry, for both atoms and then see if we could figure out how it makes a molecule. So I like to go my sodium there, find it on the periodic table, it's atomic number 11. So that tells us it's got two electrons in the first orbit, eight in the second and one in the third. And because we're skipping all that Bohr-Rutherford stuff now and just going with our dot diagram, we only have to show the one electron in that third orbit the valence orbit. Same thing for chlorine. Find it on your periodic table. There it is. It's one of our non-metals. So this is again a classic metal, non-metal molecule. And for chlorine, it has an atomic number of 17. That would give it two electrons in the first orbit, eight in the second, and seven in the third for its valence orbit. Those X's represent our electrons. Now the question is, how do these atoms go about obtaining some sort of stability or fulfillment in their outer electron or valence orbits? And the solution is rather simple for this example. That molecule is going to go there, and we're then going to have only two orbits left on sodium with eight electrons in the second orbit. And in chlorine, our third orbit is now full with eight electrons, okay? When this electron leaves, it leaves sodium with a net positive charge. And because chlorine has just gained an electron, it now has a negative charge. And it's this resultant charge imbalance that keeps them kind of stuck together or bonded together. So that's your ionic molecule for salt, okay? Moving on to the fun stuff. And if we were back in school right now, we would be preparing you guys for the molecular model building lab, which I'm trying to figure out if you can do at home. It would just require a bunch of spheres, preferably of different colors, and sticks or something to represent the bonds between them, the molecular bonds. Anyhow, more to come on that. And I might throw something together for you guys on that later this week.